hello everyone and welcome to another new video so in this video i'm going to take you guys to the tour of the pillars of the creation which is a part of the eagle nebula about six and a half to seven thousand light years away from us so the eagle nebula is a part of the milky way galaxy the one in which we reside what i'm going to do in this video is i'll take you through the image that was published by the james webb space telescope sort of compare it with the Hubble image and why this one is so special and different and then I'm going to go over the image as a whole and break down the very tiny little features that the image has to offer us and talk about the details as to what's going on particularly inside this image. I'll try to keep this video as short as possible so I request you all guys to stick around till the end. So the James Webb Space Telescope or JWST in short is one of the newest space telescope and is a successor to the Hubble Space Telescope. Hubble is very sensitive to optical light and sometimes in UV and a little bit of infrared. But the Webb Telescope on the other hand is completely designed to pick up infrared lights coming out from newly formed stars and very old galaxies that have been redshifted away. Unless you guys are living under some rock, I'm pretty sure you guys have come across all the beautiful images that the James Webb Space Telescope have been publishing so far. So as promised in this video, let's take a deep dive into the pillars of creation. So by the way, before even starting the video, I just wanted to say that you guys can download these uh, this particular high resolution images from the web's website i'll leave all of the links uh, down in the description so i highly encourage you guys to sort of go over the images and just admire the beauty of the universe okay so delving straight into the image uh, so if you sort of like spend uh, a good second just looking at the image um, just the way it is uh, one particular feature that sort of strikes out in this image are the bright stars these stars have this weird spikes around them and if you count there are like one two three four five six there are sort of like six very visible spikes around these stars and these spikes are something called the diffraction spikes now what are diffraction spikes now if you are familiar with the concept of diffraction diffraction essentially defines the way as to how light sort of interacts with a very sharp edge uh, of a particular material right now in the case of a telescope diffraction is caused when the light sort of hits the mirror of the telescope and also the optics of the telescope itself now depending on the shape or, and the size of the mirrors and uh, and the optics of the telescope or something called the struts which hold the both the lenses of the telescope together you can have different kinds of diffraction patterns so the the way that the james webb telescope is built it has hexagonal mirrors and it has like a very typical shaped uh, struts uh, these combined together gives you sort of the effects of these six diffraction patterns uh, now this is something you pretty much can't get rid of so another piece of information that i just wanted to throw at you guys is all of the dots that you see in this particular image are mostly stars um, the reason why you do not see any galaxy in this image is because this thing is so much deeply embedded in the Milky Way galaxy that it is surrounded by a lot of dust and cloud and it's pretty much impossible to pick up the lights coming up distant far of a galaxy. So all of the dots over here are stars. Now depending on the color of the stars you can tell something about their age, right? So the younger the star the hotter they are right, which corresponds to uh, the bluer colors and the older the stars the sort of colder uh, it gets and it emits in the longer side of the wavelength uh, and those are sort of highlighted by the red color so uh, when i zoom further uh, into the picture as you can see um, all of these stars are embedded inside these clouds and these stars are essentially formed inside all of these clouds and when these stars form and when they're young they give off so much radiation that it creates sort of jets around them and these are like, like interstellar winds which blows off all the gas and dust from this part of the space and this is what creates this very specific wispy like structures around the pillars of creation it's almost like when you spill some water on the table right and you take a straw and blow some air on, on, onto that water. You see how that sort of disperses out onto the table? It's exactly like that. That's how I uh, like to think about it, is all these young newly formed stars 
are so hot and they radiate away so much energy in the form of feedback jets and these jets sort of clear away all the cloud uh, as you go along and this is what essentially creates these pillars and by the way just to give you a perspective as i said earlier these pillars are about five light years in size so the light coming from this star will take about five years to reach this end of the pillar so the, these are like massive structures now another piece of uh, important information that i sort of wanted to throw in here was so this image is taken in the near infrared now infrared light as such doesn't have a color right so now in order for us humans to understand when we look at a particular picture to understand understand what's going on we need some kind of a color representation and that's where we have filters filters are a really important tool in astronomy as a whole and they sort of allow us to probe very specific wavelengths of light infrared light has a specific wavelength as i'm showing it on the screen uh, and these filters are designed around those specific wavelengths so you, you have these uh, specific filters at different wavelength and each filter allows very specific lights to to pass through it and blocks the rest so for example if i show you this particular image you see that this was taken by the near cam instrument near cam instrument is one of the key instruments in the James Webb telescope and these are the filters that were used in image now if you notice the filters and the numbers written in them you'll see that the lower wavelength filters uh, is denoted by uh, is denoted by a bluer color which means that they have a higher frequency and the higher wavelength filters for example this one is denoted in, uh, in a much redder color which means they have a lower frequency this image is a false color image and it, it is done by stacking all of the images taken by the individual filter and if you watch my previous videos these wavelengths correspond to a very specific phenomenon that's going on within that particular system uh, lower wavelength filters uh, correspond to a higher frequency which in turn corresponds to a higher temperature so these uh, these fill this particular filter will be really sensitive in studying young stars young hot stars uh, whereas on the other hand uh, the higher wavelength filters correspond to a lower frequency and these are not so hot stars so these are stars which are in their later stages of their life and they are rep essentially represented in this image by the redder colors this particular region at the tip of one of the pillars is very distinctively red and and that's because that part of the cloud is specifically a bit cooler as compared to the other parts of it one reason for that could be that particular region is surrounded by a lot of thick dust and it's sort of obscuring the light from the young star that has formed over there uh, in order to probe out right the other hand if i zoom further uh, around the image you see all this wispy jet like structures again these are the jets coming out of the young stars as they are formed now if i have to compare this image with the one taken by hubble you'll see that hubble takes takes picture in the optical wavelength and sometimes a little bit of the infrared wavelength but mostly it's optical so one interesting fact is that uh, optical light is sort of uh, opaque to these kind of dusts as uh, the wavelength of the light is comparable to the size of the dust so they sort of scatter away all the light but a higher wavelength light like the infrared which the James Webb telescope is so much sensitive to can essentially pass through all of the dust and come directly onto the lens of the telescope and we can probe that right so uh, if you compare the picture with Hubble you see uh, the picture taken by James Webb telescope show sort of shows you all the activities that are going on inside the spillers which was previously completely opaque to the Hubble Space Telescope so I really hope that you guys enjoyed this little bit breakdown of the pillars of creation now while talking about the pillars of creation you remember I spoke about young stars and and why and how the spiller of creation is a stellar nursery now what are stellar nurseries stellar nurseries are essentially dust nebulae now star formation is something that I deal with as a part of my research and star formation is one of the least understood topics of modern astronomy star formation is an extremely messy and inefficient process the currently accepted star formation rate is about 1% which is significantly when you see the large number of stars out there and that's because 
it's not only gravity that plays an important role in the process of star formation but there is a lot of contribution from uh, the feedback from the turbulence from the magnetic fields of the interstellar medium and all of these sort of have a very specific interplay in controlling the rate of star formation and that's something uh, us astronomers are trying to uh, understand and make sense of. Now just to give a basic uh, brief uh, idea about how star formation goes. So you have this giant molecular clouds like these where you have pockets of dense gas. These gas sort of comes closer and closer with the period of time. Finally gravity sort of wins and all of this gas sort of collapses together and kickstarts the process of fusion. Uh, which which is something that power stars right and that is not as simple as I just said but that's sort of the big picture about how sort of the gas collapse and forms these cores this stellar cores finally sort of evolve into uh, the stars as we know I personally study these protostars and try to understand the role of magnetic fields in the process of star forming so I observe the polarized thermal dust radiations coming out from these tiny protostellar cores. And by looking at the polarized dust emission, I can map out the magnetic fields inside those specific cores. And that can tell me how the magnetic field played a role in the process of star formation. Overall, images like this makes me really excited every morning when i wake up although this is not the data that i deal with since i study the polarized thermal emissions i, I need to look at the polarizations as well and i use radio telescopes not infrared telescopes but these uh, images also give us a different perspective of star formation sort of giving us the gas dynamics um, of these molecular clouds with all that being said i will be ending this video here um, again if you have any particular doubts about this image or any of the jwst images please feel free to comment down below i'll be really happy to sort of explain all of those images one by one if you guys wanted to and come follow me on my social media handle and finally if you really like what you see uh, consider subscribing this channel this sort of gives me a motivation to make more content for all of you guys uh, thanks and again i'll catch you guys in the next one really soon